Hey guys, today's video is about the amazing ties. So I've never actually heard of ties before, but someone commented on one of my YouTube videos and asked me some advice on buying one of them. And as, as I'd never actually had one, they look good spec and actually reading their website and looking at the intricate details of the components and the actual features of the actual head units themselves, I was actually pretty impressed. So I thought I need to do an install on a Jeep. They actually do do Jeep specific head units and that means that they come with the head unit and the fascia to go with it and the canvas decoders that are functional for the Jeep. So I thought, okay, let's, let's go ahead and pull the trigger on that. So I grabbed the head unit and I got a 1080p AHD reverse camera separately and also their uh, TPMS, a uh, tire pressure monitoring system separately as well. So rather than me testing this on the jukebox test station like I normally would, I'm actually going to install it and test it for you inside the vehicle immediately. Now, as usual, let me tell you that I don't get paid for any of these reviews. Please consider them feedback based on my opinion and, and experience. Right, let's get it out of the box, get it set up in the car, and then I'm gonna give it a score based on the look and feel, the speed, the vehicle integration, the features, the connectivity, and the sound quality. And then we'll talk a bit about value for money. And here it is. Now I can already tell you my first impressions of this are very, very good. I can feel the quality of it, which is something that is, which is really, really good to see when, you, uh, when you're dealing with these Android head units. On the front here, you have capacitive touch buttons along the left side, along with a microphone and a reset button. And on the back here, you have a radio antenna input here. You have five gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna input here, the GPS antenna input, and 4G input. So straight away, you've got five gigahertz Wi-Fi and you've got 4G mobile network, which is awesome. In the center here, you have the various input and output connectors, which I'll go into a little bit later. Then over here on this side, you have where the main loom fits in. And then you have the coax spdiff and the optical digital outputs. So this is pure digital out on the back of this head unit, which automatically makes it one of the best head units that I've dealt with, along with the joying that I recently reviewed. So this is going to be an absolutely amazing head unit. I, I can't wait to get it up and running. And then you have this little fan over the top of the big meter heat sink that you can see inside. And that means that it's gonna be a quality unit because they've thought of everything to make sure that the high quality components inside stay cool and operate at their best. So that's excellent to see as well. So in the box it came with two 4G antennas, a camera input wire, GPS antenna, a loom which has analog video and audio in, an amp trigger wire, a microphone input, and the 4G SIM card holder. A USB input, another two USB inputs, so you have three total USB inputs. And then you have the pre-out loom. So the pre-out loom, as usual, has the front and rear left and right channels but it also has a sub out as you would expect. And then this yellow one is not video, it is the center channel. So this head unit actually has 5.1 channels of audio, which is awesome. And then they supply you with a mini screwdriver and some screws. Then it comes with the main loom. Now this is designed specifically for the Jeep Grand Cherokee, and this is gonna fit into the factory loom on the Jeep. So it's gonna make installation really easy. And the antenna adapter, which has a FACRA on one side and the aftermarket antenna connection on the other, which is for the Jeep. And the Jeep canvas decoder, so that I can get the features of the Jeep on this head unit as well. And on top of all of that, it also comes with this. This is a dash trim for the Jeep which is going to make this head unit look stock inside the Jeep, which is going to look amazing. So if you're a Jeep Grand Cherokee owner and you want to see how to fit this in the car, I'm gonna do a tutorial video on my channel separately from this. But for everyone else who just wants to look at the quality of the unit, because obviously it can go into any car, I'm going to show you now what it can do. So I've got this one installed in a Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. I've acquired it specifically for this car. 
and it did come with the plastic dash trim specifically for this car and the canvas decoder for this car as well. So we'll start by switching the car on so you can see how quickly it boots. And there you go. As you can see, no time at all for it to switch on. It literally is on and ready to go immediately after me actually switching the car on. So as always, we'll talk about the look and feel of the actual device itself. Immediately, I can tell you it's already one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. This comes from the attention to detail of the software and the quality of components of the hardware. But this particular unit comes with RGB buttons, which basically means you can choose whatever color you want for the buttons. So you can match your car if you want, but I've kind of gone with the uh, rotating RGB just because I can. Um, so as you can see, it's slowly rotating through colors at the moment. But that's just the buttons. So moving on to the screen. So it's got a QLED screen. Real high quality screen is on this unit. It's lovely and sharp, but the icons aren't too small. It's easily readable. The dashboard is what we're looking at right now, okay? The best dashboard I have ever seen, and I'm not exaggerating that fact. This is something where designers have put a lot of time and effort in to make this look amazing. And I'm talking about in a way that is actually useful for people who are going to be using this in a car. This is by no means an Android tablet. The software that's on it, the launcher software that's on it is beautiful. So let me walk you through it. The main dashboard is split into these four widgets. So the first one on the top left here is the music player. If you put a USB stick in which contains FLAC or MP3, it will read it directly on here. It's going to utilize album art and it's just going to sound amazing. So nice and easy, very simple. This also controls Bluetooth music from your phone. So you can tap it, it opens up the music player and you can go back and forward and uh, listen to various music. As you can see, it also has the album art as well. Uh, so it does look pretty nice. The second widget here is something very special indeed. Now you might consider this to be a bit gimmicky, but I absolutely love it. So as you can see on the screen here, you have a, uh, the back of a Porsche. So if I just hit this button here, you can see it is indeed a Porsche and you can sort of have a look around it. And this Porsche, you can uh, change the color of it if you want a red or a yellow or a white, whatever. This is a white Jeep, so make it, I, I've kept it white. You can set the number plate specifically what you want it to say and where in the world your number plate is for. You can actually add it there. You can choose whether the speedometer is in miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And finally, theme, you can choose what you, how you want the background to look of your, uh, of, your, of your car. And it does include a Santa one, which I will show you now. Anyway, you still don't know what it does, so let me tell you what it does. So as you drive along, this animates. You have the speedo up here, which is going to show you your speed based on GPS, nice and basic stuff. But the car reacts to the way that you drive. So as you turn left and right as you're driving along, the app is detecting where your steering wheel is. So as you turn left, it's gonna detect that you're turning left and the animation will shift to the left. When you turn right, it does the same, it shifts to the right. When you brake, the car comes closer to you. As you accelerate, it goes further away. If you get to a certain speed, the road starts to go multicolored as the lines are coming towards you. And that's just really, really cool. Obviously, you're driving, okay? You shouldn't be looking at the head unit as you drive, but if you've got passengers or kids or whatever in the car, that really, really is amazing. But that's not gonna be for everyone, okay? I understand that you want this head unit to be playing your music and navigating for you, and you don't wanna be distracted by things going on on the screen unnecessarily. So, if you don't like this, you can choose what you want to be here. So there's three other options if you don't want this app. So what you do is you hit this cube button here, and it gives you the options of what you can do here. So the first one is map, and as you can see, you can have Google Maps here and you can use this to navigate wherever you want without having to go fully into Google Maps, which is really cool. The next one is reverse, which basically shows you the reverse camera as you're driving along, which I think is really cool. And you can expand this by hitting the button up here. And this, as I don't know if you can see, but it's a very, very sharp 1080p image from the reverse camera. Now the reverse camera is from Tyres as well. It didn't come with this head unit, but I got it separately. And it is the sharpest rear view camera that I've ever seen. And I know it's only a reverse camera, but as things go, you can read number plates. It's amazing. So I uh, really, really highly recommend that as well. Anyway, moving on. 
Uh, the other option you have is DVR. One thing that I didn't order with this unit is the DVR camera, which is the front facing camera, which records. But if I did, you'd be able to watch the camera on this part of the screen as you're driving along if you wanted to. And you've got buttons like record video, snap, lock, and uh, record voice on the screen here as well. So there's lots of controls over the DVR aspect as well. I, I decided that I'm gonna get the DVR for this car because this functionality is amazing. Like again, real, real amazing stuff. So the third part here are the applications. So what do you want from a head unit? You want the most used applications to be at the forefront of the screen. And most Android head units have a problem in this particular regard because they don't allow you to access your main apps directly on the dashboard but this one does and if you, you can pick and change these i've just picked these ones but if i wanted to add another one i could just hit this plus sign and then it will list all the apps that are currently installed and it will add it to this section if i wanted to do that so that's cool as well and then finally over here you have the radio uh, very standard stuff you want to listen to the radio you can press play here and it will play the radio or you can tap it it will go full screen and you can choose the radio stations. So nice and easy. And I don't know if you've noticed, but everything I'm doing looks really pretty because the designers have made this really nice kind of bluey purpley color and it just looks spectacular, very modern and it goes really well with the QLED screen that they've supplied. So, so far, amazing head unit, right? And remember, I don't get paid for these reviews. I'm not. I'm not um, getting paid to say how amazing this thing is. It genuinely is crazy good. Anyway, moving on. So, told you about the dashboard. We'll have a look at the menus. Um, so again, this is part of the design of this unit. Remember when you buy an Android head unit, you normally have to deal with Android menus because the designers of the Android head unit don't really put the effort into these aspects. The only other head unit, which I know does a really, really good job with menus and the general interface, is joying. So you've got different aspects of the menus along the top and as you can see really large easy to read buttons down below and as you go through everything and you see all the different things that you can actually do with this unit everything is very easy to use very well explained and it's just really really nice and easy to use and whilst we're in the menu we might as well talk about a few cool things so under user you can select driving reminder and there's two options here for warnings. So if you're driving at more than 80 miles an hour, it's gonna warn you that you're driving unsafely, but it'll only warn you once. It warns you about once every half an hour if you exceed 80 miles an hour. But you can switch that off if you don't want it on, but it, it's pretty cool. And then there's a driving fatigue reminder, and basically if you're driving for more than three hours, there's an audible warning to say, you know, are you still awake? So that's really cool as well. So now it's a good time to talk about vehicle integration. So under device, you have car model and steering wheel options. These are to do with the unit decoding the car's canvas network. So if we go into car model here and enter the Ties app, you can see that it's connecting to the internet to give us, to give us the latest options, and there we go. So these are the latest Ties apps, but under model selection, you can choose the specific vehicle that you have if it's on this list, and what it's going to do is going to give you makes and models of your vehicle so that you can choose exactly which car you have and it's going to automatically integrate with your vehicle based on the selections that you make here. And as you can see here, there's different canvas boxes that might be supplied with your tyres unit when you buy it. And this gives you the option of choosing which one it is based on what it looks like, as you can see here so that you're gonna get exactly the right settings for the equipment that you have. And this made it very easy in this car. So for example, let me show you that the volume control works fine if I'm using the, as I'm using the steering wheel. And I can change the tracks here by using the, um, the other buttons as well. So it's, uh, it's very cool in that regard. But not only that, if I start the car here, and I pop it into reverse, you can see that as I move the steering wheel it's actually moving the guide on the screen and that's because it's reading the canvas network and it's telling it for the steering controls to tell the head unit 
which way you're going. So that's amazing as well. And uh, one of the higher spec features of this unit. So from a vehicle integration perspective, this, this thing is amazing. It's probably one of the best, if not the best head unit that I've ever tested from that perspective, because not only has a lot of thought gone into the design of the software to make it very, very easy to set up, but also they, they're giving you the items like the dash trims and the canvas decoders as well. Uh, so it really is the whole package for some vehicles uh, for very, very easy upgrades. So it's awesome. Right, moving on. Sound, let's talk about sound, okay? Because it's a very, very important thing when we're dealing with an Android head unit. Now we already know that this head unit comes with optical and coax spdiff digital outputs, which is amazing. It's only really available on the highest possible end units. In fact, the only other head unit which actually has those ports is the joying head unit, which I recently installed in my Saab 93 convertible. But this head unit also has the second variation of DSP, which is digital signal processing. And what that means is it basically gives you loads of control of how it sounds. And if we go into the equalizer settings, I can show you that it actually has a 27 band equalizer, 27. So this is amazing control over the individual frequencies that make up the sound inside the car. And this car has component audio, okay? So I can really make the most out of it by adjusting the individual frequencies because it, to, to make this car sound brilliant. So as you can see here, they are kind of analog switches that you can slide up and down. But what you could do is you could hit the curve button up here and it'll give you like a little graph showing you the dips and uh, peaks of your frequency amplification. You've got loud controls up here. If you don't want to faff about with the manual audio controls, you can use uh, the standard presets, which are here. And then you have uh, surround sound options, uh, fat stereo and super fat. The bass enhancement actually allows you to separately control the front and rear of your car. Some cars have different speakers in the front and the rear and you don't want to have too much bass on certain set of speakers and not on others. So this is actually going to give you the option to individually control them, which is really cool. On the field, uh, you actually get to control the delay to any individual speakers based on the distance they are away from you, which is really cool, uh, as shown here. And under sound filter, you can filter out certain frequencies. Again, based on the front and rear of the car, you can control it. So you're starting to get into the very nitty gritty of the specific types of audio control that you only see in the most expensive units. And the only other Android head unit which I've reviewed which comes close to having this kind of control is the Joying, which sounds amazing as well. So all in all, because of all this control, the uh, th this head unit is properly amazing. Now from a speed perspective, if you've seen me using it, it's a very, very fast unit. And this is actually the three gigabyte RAM model, which is the lowest that they do it. They do a, a three, a four, and a six gigabyte model. Obviously go for the higher amount of RAM if you're looking to do lots of multitasking and running lots of apps at the same time. But I can guarantee that the three gigabyte version is awesome and it really is, it's absolutely fine for doing all the stuff that I've just said. And obviously because I have actually installed it in this Jeep and it did come with a dash trim, I can tell you that the dash trim and the installation itself does look factory. It really looks very smart. I hope you can see that. I'll uh, add a few photos as well so you can sort of see what it looks like. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with the way that it's come out. It is very, very nice indeed. Okay, so let's talk about phone integration. From a basic point of view, obviously you can connect your phone via Bluetooth, but then you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So if you're using Android Auto, unfortunately on this head unit, it's only available via wire, so you actually have to have the USB connected to the unit for it to work. But Apple CarPlay is available either wired or wirelessly. So to gain access to either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you need to go into your apps by hitting this little round circle here. It gives you access to uh, all the apps that are installed. But CarLink is what you want. And what it's gonna do now, it's gonna look for a device, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So there you go, you've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, right at your fingertips if you want to use it. Now, to be honest, I kind of feel that's a little bit of a waste because of the amount of effort and the beauty of the actual Android head unit in its default state and the fact that you can have all the apps that you want on it anyway 
you don't I, I wouldn't use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto I would just use the head unit in its in its most basic state like this but that's up to you it has those features it's absolutely packed with everything you could possibly want it, it has to be one of the best Android head units I have ever seen amazing truly amazing device I almost forgot to mention the TPS module that I bought. So this was not part of the head unit. I did actually have to get it separately. It's the TPMS tire pressure monitoring system. It comprises of these four internal sensors. So as you can see, this is a, a tire valve. This is the part that will actually be visible on the wheel itself. And on the other side here, you actually have the pressure sensor. And this is the actual receiver, the TPMS receiver that is plugged into the USB port on the head unit. And when it's plugged in, you access it by going to your apps and finding the tire pressure monitor system app, which is this one here. And as you can see, it's now reading all of the sensors now. So I actually need to go to the garage to take my tires off uh, to uh, get these fitted in place of the existing tire valves. But when I do, uh, these are all going to give me the correct reading of the tire pressures, uh, which will be great. So from a look and feel perspective, it has capacitive touch buttons and as I've said before, it has one of the most beautiful user interfaces of any Android head unit I've ever tested, it, or any head unit for that matter. Truly customizable as well from a dashboard perspective, but all of the menus are also very, very easy to navigate and it generally just is a very, very beautiful unit. It reacts very fast and it's intuitive. So. From a look and feel perspective, I'm actually going to give it a 10 because it is just amazing. From a speed perspective, this does have an octa-core processor and three gigabytes of RAM, but it is very, very fast. I mean, it is probably one of the fastest head units I've ever tested. And you have the option of going for the four or six gigabyte option as well. I never had any lag with this unit. It's never caused any issues. I'm really impressed with it, but there's always room for improvement. So I'm gonna give this unit a nine. From a vehicle integration perspective, again, one of the best I've ever seen. It's really, really intuitive. The user interface makes it very, very easy to set up canvas decoders for a particular types of cars. You don't need to go through many, many menus. The application from Ties itself makes things very, very easy. And you can also get the unit with the canvas decoder and the dash trims and everything as one package. But that stuff's available from other manufacturers as well. But what isn't available is the software that makes everything so very easy. So from a vehicle integration perspective, absolutely gonna give this unit a 10. From a features perspective, it's amazing. You get your Android Auto, your wireless Apple CarPlay, and then you get things that I never wanted before, like the ability to view rear view camera as you're driving along on the dashboard. But then you also have easy integration with other things like tire pressure monitoring systems, DVR units, and other flashy things. But I'm only gonna give the unit an eight because at the moment the unit does not have wireless Android Auto. From a connectivity perspective, you've got analog video input and output, you've got multiple USBs, and then crucially you have the optical and coax spdiff digital outputs which is absolutely awesome but unfortunately no hdmi in or hdmi out so i'm going to score the unit a nine and finally from a sound perspective the thing sounds amazing you have ridiculous amounts of control the tw there's a 27 band graphic equalizer and you have the ability to control the front and rear speakers separately to get the perfect possible sound then of course you have the fact that it has the spdiff connections on the back as well so ultimately this is a truly amazing sounding unit i'm going to score it a 10 making this the highest scoring head unit that i've ever tested so from a value for money perspective this unit does not cost the earth and that makes them crazy good value for money considering the quality of these units and the customizability of them you know ties is the way to go i'm going to give it a 10. If I've missed anything, please feel free to leave a comment below and obviously I will address that for you if I can. And please like and subscribe the video if you like this kind of content and I will continue to review head units as and when they come in.